In this video, I've prepared three trade entries that you can use on any time frame in any market, and I will show you exactly how to find the trades top down, multi time frame with the perfect entry, how to set stops, how to set targets, and how to manage your trades. So, here we are on the four hour time frame, and we're gonna then go to the 15 minute time frame to really sniper our entry. So what do we have here? The market is in a downtrend. You can see it went from making higher highs and higher lows to lower lows and lower highs. We are also using a moving average, which is used by a lot of professional traders and many of the traders in the market wizards, for example, also use moving averages. I use the EMA 50 period. And what do we see here? The market is in a downtrend and you can see it's making those waves. And this is a very natural way of price action. And if you want to sell and if you want to go short, then you want to sell for the highest possible price. So you want to look for trades that are pullbacks, pullbacks, for example, into previous highs and lows, pullbacks into moving averages. And here we have everything coming together. We have a pullback. You can see the market is moving higher into a previous support, which may now hold as resistance. It's also the 50 period moving average. So it really does make a lot of sense to look for a short on the lower time frame. So let's do that. We go to the lower time frame, and what do we have here? We don't need the EMA, but we can use it. But for now, let's just look at price action. And what do we have here? We have an uptrend. We can probably also draw some trend line in here. We seem to have some support and resistance level in here. So you can see resistance turns into support and in here as well. And the trade idea is very simple on the lower time frame. We want to look for a breakout. We want to wait for the market to clear a low because that is then indicating that the market is making lower lows and lower highs. Very important on the lower time frame, we want to wait for a trend following entry. We want to wait for the market to really confirm the trend structure is into the direction of our trade. In this case down. So we need to wait for the market to break into a new low. Let's see what happens. We fast forward and here would have been a theoretical entry. Now the market is making lower lows. We can even go to the five minute here and look at the microstructure because now what do we see is that we are making here this head and shoulder and a head and shoulder is more than just a name because the head and shoulder shows us that the market went from higher highs here to lower highs here. So here was the highest high. Here we have the lowest uh, lower high. And here we are now making a lower low. So it's a complete trend change. Higher high, higher lows, lower lows and lower highs. This is exactly what you want to see. And you can either execute this on the 15 minute. You can look for the breakout on the five minute. Totally up to you, whatever time frame you prefer. You could, for example, then um, look for stops. Where would make a stop sense? In this example, a stop loss would make probably sense here below or above the high here. So our stop loss is then protected not only by the support and resistance area, but also by this last swing high. So it's a good place for a stop loss. And let's map out this trade. You can see here theoretical entry, stop loss here somewhere above the high. And then we look left to find target areas. For targets, you could use previous support and resistance areas here, here. And here seem to be three very important ones. So you could really choose, okay, how aggressive do you want to be with your target? And we could, for example, go here. It's a 1.8, 1 1.9 1 reward to risk ratio, very close to the 2.1, which is what I would recommend on the five minute time frame. For example, you could have gotten in much, much earlier on the breakout and therefore gotten a higher reward to risk ratio uh, easier. But that's really up to you, whatever time frame you prefer. So let's see what would have happened afterwards. So we have a strong downtrend and you can see within just a few candles, the market well, barely made it, not quite. So let's see, can we actually get a spike? And yeah, you can see the market did move into the lows. And if you don't want to have a fixed target, you could, for example, also add a moving average to your charts and then trail your stop loss behind the moving average. Actually, let's see how this would have played out. And let's see when the market would have crossed the moving average can see for now the market moved higher. You would just keep trailing your stop loss along the lows or along the moving average rather. Now it looks like a retracement, but the market kept going and going. You can see, okay, now, whoops, your, your stop loss could have been somewhere around here. It, very important it is that you don't trail your stop loss too close on the moving average, just to make sure that spread or volatility is not a problem for you. 
And you can see the market just kept going and going, coming close, retesting the moving average. And let's see, do we get a breakout? And this is exactly the reason why you don't want to put your stop loss right at the moving average. You always want to give it some room here. And you can see you will just keep trailing your stop loss and trailing and trailing until you have the breakout. And then this is where you could have been taken out of the trade. So in this example, a trailing stop loss would have performed much better, obviously, but it's not always the case. So you really have to keep testing and developing your trade idea. How do you like to keep trading? Do you like a fixed reward to risk ratio, a fixed target where you don't have to think about your stop loss, your target and all of the other things? Because it seems like this would have been a much, much bigger winning trade. But at the same time, what also happens is that your holding time increases significantly. So in this example, it may have worked out, but there will be other examples where, for example, you would have need to hold over a weekend, which is not ideal. Also, there might news come up. Maybe there's an NFP, an interest rate, FOMC, and this could also cause significant liquidity, which could be a huge problem for your target and for your trade in general. So don't make a decision just based on one trade idea, but keep testing it and then see what works for you and understand the pros and the cons of the different approaches. Strategy number two is a very, very popular multi time frame pin bar approach. And what you see here is the market is in an uptrend. And where is it trading into? Into a previous resistance. You can see the perfect market memory or price memory. The market is moving into the highs and then it's seeing a rejection. You can see here is the 119 round number. We could also add things like the Bollinger Band, for example, if you would like to see if there is a Bollinger Band rejection. So we have, for example, here the Bollinger Band, you can see the market is trading out of it and then rejecting. And this is often um, a good confluence on top of everything else. Very often when you see the market is punching out of the Bollinger Bands and then trading back into it with a rejection, that could often then be another confluence factor to help you time trade entries. But we're now on the daily time frame and we want to go lower because on the lower time frame, we want to look for short entries based on this trade idea. So let's go maybe to the one hour. We could probably also go to the 15, but let's start here and see what we have. And on the lower time frame, I look for trend lines, support and resistance. This is not really helpful. So can we find another trend line? Yeah, here, this looks not too bad. And what do we also want to see is that the market is breaking a previous low. So a trend line low, I don't recommend trading because trend lines are very subjective. You can trade or draw a trend line 360 degrees. So it's very easy to be too subjective or to just force a trend line. Whereas if you add the concept of breaking a swing point, that gives it a little bit more objectiveness. So we have a trend line, but we also want to make sure that the price is breaking into a new low, uh, which would have been here. So on the breakout here, we would look for short opportunities. So let's see and keep following the price and see what happens. The market is testing the lows. That's a good signal because it shows that the breakout level that we identified has some relevance. And now you can see the market punched through the breakout level. All right, so now where would we put our stop loss? You have a few options. Here is a swing high. It makes sense to put the stop here. If you are a little bit more conservative, you can put your stop loss here. So. I think as always, the right answer is probably somewhere in the middle. So we don't put it too close. We put it maybe here in the middle between the swing highs and for targets, we look left where our big support and resistance here uh, and here seems to be some level also here. And then if we want to have one more here. So for targets, we have quite a few options and um, what you could do is you decide, do you want to be very conservative? Then you're out at the first um, level. You don't have a lot of things that could challenge the price in between. The more and the further away your target is, the more the likelihood increases that the market bounces somewhere on the way. So this is very important to understand. A wide target, yeah, can mean a higher reward to risk ratio, but also the risk of giving back profits increases. So in my trading, don't go for the um, most conservative, but you could, for example, go to this one. It gives you a nice two to one reward to risk ratio, and that would be a good way to approach this probably. So let's see what happens. 
can see the market is for now giving us here this retest coming back moving against us a little bit challenging the trade and you can see that's why you really want to make sure that your stop loss is not set right at a previous high or low because the market is often coming back into those areas but you always want to give your stop loss a little bit more room to just um, let the price room to unfold so it looks good the market is now breaking into a low which is great great added confluence so this should give us some conf confidence in our trade because the market is making lower lows very long holding time here on this one and then you see if we extend it forward this would have been hit and again we can just keep following the price action and see maybe compare it also with the moving average trailing approach so here's the moving average and in the previous example the trailing approach would have been a higher um, outcome but here you can see the stop loss if we would have traded along the moving average would have been hit here and obviously this means that we would have given back a lot of profits so again um, as you as i've said it's not always better to have a trailing stop loss approach but it can be good in some occasions it can be bad in other occasions and so therefore one size fits all is not good and i would always recommend and encourage you to do your own testing and really find out what type of trader you are do you like to be in trades for long times you don't have problems with holding onto trades for long times or do you prefer to just have a target and then be done with the trade Strategy number three is a trap pattern. I've talked about them in the past many times and they are just so nice that I would like to include them here as well. So the market on the four hour time frame is in a very strong uptrend and the uptrend seems to be losing some momentum. Whereas previously you can see the market moved higher quite easily. Here suddenly, first of all, we start seeing red candles that are larger than what we have seen previously. And also the price seems to be struggling here to push higher and this is what we would call a trap we have the highest point during the down uh, during the uptrend here then the market tried to make a breakout attempt but was rejected it traded higher a lot of breakout traders probably would have jumped on this but the market reversed and trapped those traders so if you are not out with a stop loss hit then now you are trapped in a short position and this doesn't look too good so that is the basis of the IA trade idea and if you see a trap now you could go to a lower time frame and look for trading opportunities away from the trap so let's for example go maybe to the 15 minute time frame and see what we have and here we can probably draw some trend lines we have a nice trend line here but a trend line as i said is not good enough so we also want to identify the last swing point and if the price breaks this cluster here then we could look for breakout opportunities we could for example also add a moving average which is also right here which could also help us with breakout trading but i think for now this is good enough so let's just see what happens afterwards now the market would be breaking out here with this next candle actually already it's not a very strong breakout so you could make a decision this breakout is maybe not strong enough and now you have the dilemma are you waiting for a new candle because you want to see that the market is actually pulling away a little bit more and then what could happen is that the market takes off and you are left with nothing so it's really a big dilemma that many traders face do you risk that the market may run away or and also on the other hand you maybe hope that you get a stronger breakout level uh, breakout signal so there's no one size fits all and you can see in this example the market would have made a substantially um, larger breakout move so now in this case where do you put stops probably above the trend line here and now you're forced to use a very very wide stop loss because the stop loss um, needs to be protected it doesn't make sense to have a stop loss right here because uh, if the stop loss gets hit it doesn't really invalidate the trade idea here it does because here it would be uh, above the trend line above the breakout point you definitely don't want to see if you are short oriented a move that is so uh, deep inside uh, or against your trade for targets we could choose here 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 or uh, and here is another level so now you can see this trade dynamic is already a little bit off we could go here for the middle somewhere you still get a nice two to one actually that's not too bad looking because 
you are with the trend on the higher time frame keep in mind we are looking for a trap into a new trend and on the lower time frame we have some nice support and resistance so 2.15 is not the worst so let's see what would have happened afterwards and what the trade dynamics look like so now you can see the market is moving into your favor a little bit and it's looking not bad so okay we might get away with this some retracement but looking healthy and you can see okay in this example it would have worked out even though we had a white stop loss uh, the market did eventually reach the target and you can see what would have happened afterwards we actually have our first retracement so this target would have been the right choice here going for wider targets again there's a huge trade off wider targets bigger reward to risk ratios but the market will have a much lower time to actually reach it because there are so many levels in between and the holding time is longer so maybe the market will get to this level later on but in the meantime you would have to endure a lot of retracements you would have to see that your unrealized profits are evaporating when the market is going against you so a lot of pros and cons and i hope this helps you a little bit to understand market dynamics trend dynamics a higher lower time frame how they play together and if this helps let me know in the comments below i really would like to hear from you and don't forget to subscribe leave a thumbs up and i will be back with new videos as every week